Hello there and welcome to the standpoint. Hmm. Today, standpoint the assembly, assembly. Standpoint the assembly. Today we do have a program for you. You know, a few weeks ago I was listening to Na Ashoko's show on Asasi Radio. Um, she has this um, girl talk program on Asasi Radio on Tuesdays, in, I think around 7 p.m. And I had her talking to three young ladies. All of them were firstborns, and um, it was quite revealing. Quite revealing. I think we take a lot of things for granted as parents. How the experiences growing up as first daughters has kind of affected them negatively because of the experiences. And I thought, hmm, this is something we need to explore further. So today I have three ladies from all over, from Ashanti, from Greater Accra, from I mean, they are here to share the experiences, to educate us. So we have to be careful because a lot of the challenges that our young people have today start from parenting. And if we will get it right, we need to start from there. So our topic today is I'm a daughter, not a mother. Dear mom, dear dad, I am a daughter, not a mother. Well, let me say thank you to GTP for my cloth. This is Adipa. Yes, this is Adipa cloth. And my dress is by Liran Collections, you know, making me look all girly. I am mean, so grateful to them. Makeup by the one and only at the underscore glow bar. At the underscore glow bar. She is on Facebook as glow bar. She's on Instagram as at the underscore glow bar. The underscore, like, you know, that underscore. Not, don't write. The underscore glow bar. Follow her there and call her anytime. She will sort you out. And um, who else? The rest is all me. <laughs> so welcome to the standpoint. We take a break when we come back. We meet three daughters, three first daughters, and they will share the experience. You'll be amazed. Don't miss it. We'll be back. Welcome back to The Standpoint. Yesterday, I have three amazing, beautiful, hardworking, and confident ladies with me on The Standpoint. They are all first daughters, and you're going to share the experiences growing up as a first daughter. As I told you during our intro, the topic is, I am a daughter, not a mother. Dear mom, dear dad, I am a daughter, not a mother. Well, let me say thank you to GTP, who are our sponsors. GTP is on an OGA campaign, original, genuine, and authentic. You can only be sure of that if you can buy from um, any wooden shop, or any of the accredited dealers across the country, you know, it's written GTP dealer, or some sometimes, you know, other people go and pick the retail and everything, but you can tell there's a code that when you watch the standpoint, there's a code that you can scratch to test and then find out if it's really the original GTP. You can also buy online, www.buygtp.com. No, don't come to me. I don't have some for you. <laughs> and then thank you to... Esther and balloons and accessories, everything balloons and accessories, they are in charge and they will sort you out. They have branches across Accra. They have one at Cow Lane, um, adjacent to the Rollins Park. There's one on the Spinkters Road near Palace Mall. There's one at Wager. They're about to open a branch at Achimota and then East Ligon. Gradually, they will go outside the country because balloons are for all occasions. Now to my set. I have some amazing ladies who are trying to make me feel like an old lady because I have to wear my spectacles. You know, chicks will chrome, chicks will chrome, chicks will chrome. So I have um, Dorothy Cornelius Aj. She's a senior sales consultant, real estate executive, and a media personality. Welcome to the standpoint. Thank you. Good to place a face to the voice. Yes, finally. <laughs> yes. And then next to her, I have Brenda Amponsa. She's a nurse and a TV host. 
Welcome to the stand point. Thank you very much. Coming all the way from Kumasi. Yes, please. Do two, do two. <laughs> do two, do two. Why are they? Thank you. It was last minute, but you agreed to come. Thank you so much. You're and then welcome. next to me, I have Antonia Tony DBA. She's an entrepreneur and a banker. Nasikano. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the standpoint. Good to Thank have you, you ladies. You. Well, so a few weeks ago, I listened to Nashako, which I normally listen to. You know, she's one of my crazy daughters. I followed her from Radio Gold to wherever, you know, wherever she goes. I listened to her. And I heard you, ladies. I was driving home. Okay. And I just couldn't change my channel. I was shocked because it was very revealing yeah. very very revealing so i told her no i need to have these ladies on the standpoint and we need to continue talking about this because yeah. this is something that needs to go down yeah. for parents to understand and other people who find themselves in that situation yeah. to also find yeah. closure let yeah. me start with you tonia after uh, that show have you come into contact with your mother yes i have actually what was the reaction? Did she listen? <laughs> she didn't listen, but um, I think someone told her about it. So um, she didn't take it seriously, though, because um, personally, I know her intentions, you know, we all do it. I think it's not intentional. Right. We, we sit back and then we realize that, oh, that was something. So we need to mm. check it. So I think yeah. that was what basically happened with her. Mm. But she didn't take it personal. Yeah. What about you, Dorothy? spoken to my mom yet but I mean I have people calling in and they were actually surprised that I mean for all that has happened to me I'm still very focused and I still I, I still want to do better for mm -hmm. myself and I always say that I, I wouldn't go saying that because I want to say she was a good mom or she was a bad mom like she said sometimes you do without knowing mm -hmm. I feel like there's no formula to parenting so I feel exactly. I'm thinking maybe back then she was doing it because she thought maybe that was right she's mm -hmm. helping me out do something but right. Um, doing that, she could maybe she couldn't just find the balance between mm -hmm. maybe listening to me and knowing that oh, I'm not just I'm not mm -hmm. a mom. I'm your right. daughter. I also need the care and attention. Right. Yeah. So uh, it's, it's it's hard, but mm -hmm. yeah. I'm happy I could share those things Thanks, because okay. yes, because I had people coming in telling me, oh yeah, I was, wow, I've, I've been going through this. I thought I was alone because sometimes when you voice it out, it seemed like you're ungrateful. It mm -hmm. seemed like exactly. you don't want to because I remember <laughs> one time where she, she, she thought maybe I didn't like my siblings. But the thing is, Growing up, you know, I we'll get into the yeah. you know okay. the nitty gritty <laughs> of the story. Some people are concerned; they want to quickly. Ah, what are they talking about? You get to hear, you know. Yeah. Let me give Nash a call here, you know, because it's through her. Normally, that's what we don't. Most of us in the media, we don't do. Yeah. We don't give credit. It's, yeah. To where to the source, you know, yeah. where we got that people come here and said, "Oh, I just discovered you," but uh -huh. no, I heard you said it. Brenda. Yes, mom. What was the reaction? You were, were you also in the studio or you were on phone? No, I was in the studio. You were in the yes. studio. I was on leave then, so I was in Accra. What was the reaction when you went back? My mom what? is in Kumasi, so actually she didn't listen. But right. before I could get to the house, I had a message on my phone from my kid brother saying that he's sorry. Oh. I was I was even emotional, but he was the one I gave credit to that, in spite of everything that we're going through to make them, um, keep up with what they were doing as kids. He was very much grateful anytime you do something for him. But probably they didn't know that we were also selling our happiness out just right. to make them smile. So like before I could just leave, I saw his message that I didn't know you had to go through all this because of us. I'm sorry. And I couldn't even answer. I felt a way I've sold them out, but I really needed to talk about it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's good. And that's what I hope this program will do today. Will help people find healing. Yeah. You know, you yourself find healing. Because I was talking to this chick. I could still, <laughs> you know, de de detect the, 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 the hurt in the, yeah. you know, the hurt in there. Yeah. Tonya, so you are the first of how many children? We are only two. Two, two girls. Two. Yeah. two girls. So you are the first one. Yes, I am. And what's the age difference between you and your... Three younger? years. Three years. Yeah. So, how was it like growing up as a first daughter? Okay, so it was all rosy, if I should use the word rosy. Mm -hmm. um, we were all in Nigeria. My dad is a Nigerian. Okay. And we had to move to Ghana, I think somewhere around 97. Um, probably, should I say, starting life all over again. So, we came to Ghana and we 
mom had to look for a job. She's a nurse. Mm. So she got a job. And my dad was still in Nigeria, though. So we're living just with our mom. And because we had to make ends meet, she would work overtime. Mm -hmm. So she's Muslim, not at home. She could stay like at the office or at the hospital for like days or probably up to a week before we even see her. Mm. So it was all on me right now to take care of my kid sister. So and how old were you? I was around um, 10. Okay. 10 years, yes. Okay, and your kid sister was about seven years? About seven. So yeah. a baby taking care of a baby. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, mom leaving, she would leave like little notes, um, like on a mirror. Um, when you come back from school, um, prepare this, make sure your sister eats, fetch water. Our grandmom used to stay at Nungwa, okay. like the town itself. And it's quite a distance from where we stay. So we have to fetch water for my grandmom. So imagine fetching water from where we are all the way there up and until the drum is actually full. That's all we're doing. And then I have to come back, make sure my sister has her bath. We eat, probably, mostly taking care of the house and all. The next morning we wake up, we have to sweep, do everything, go to school. So I was practically taken care of. Mm. And yeah. this was not a life we're used to? No. Because it wasn't like that in Nigeria? No. When you were living with your... Yeah. Not at but all. But what was your dad then when you moved? Um, he was in Nigeria. Yeah, okay, so you didn't come down with your dad? No. No. So your mom will leave and to be just the two of you in the house? Exactly. And doing all that you have to cook and everything? Yeah. And see to it that she goes to school and all yeah. that? Yeah. I dress her up. I make sure she goes to school. I also have to go to school as well. Mm. I mean, we come back. I have to see to it that she's undressed, takes her baths, eats, mm. you know, and then we have to do what we have to do before. Homework and all that. And then go you fetch water. and then see to it. Yeah, that yeah. she does her homework as well. And, and at that age... Do you remember how it affected? Did you take a toll? Were you feeling it that all you, you grew up before you felt the the enormity of the burden that was placed on you, um, or you felt it at that age? No, I didn't really feel it at that age. Um, for me, I thought I, I saw it as if I was assisting my mom because there was no one else to do that. Mm. Um, but when I grew, as I was growing, that was where it hit me. Um, I had to mature before, like ahead of my age, mm -hmm. because so I didn't have, I didn't really enjoy, should being I say enjoy it, being a child. And there was a lot of responsibility. So I had to like, man up, if I should use mm -hmm. that word. Yeah. Um, so people didn't see me fun. My friends didn't see me fun because I'm, 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 my thinking is different. Oh, the opinion, same do do, you know, all those yeah, things. Yeah. But then I, I, I felt alone in a way because I felt no one understood me. It got to a point, my sister also, we, we were not that close. So that was where the hurt was because I felt... You had sacrificed so much. I have sacrificed a lot mm -hmm. for her. We did not agree on any level. And I, I can imagine her friends also saw me in a different way, which was very hurtful. Mm. We were not connecting on, on any level. Um, she would rather go and tell her, she, her friends stuff, things that I feel we could share together and be united. We would fight over the little things. And I, I believe it was part of what I had been through. I felt I had been there for her, but she just doesn't get it. Yeah. There are times where I have my So you my felt moment. she owed you loyalty. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I feel like I don't have any other sibling. She's the only one I have, and um, we should be able to connect. I don't have anyone I can talk to, but I wasn't having her because she didn't see me that way. I felt she didn't love me. Mm -hmm. I felt I was alone in all this, right. and I had to stick with it that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, until recently. <laughs> have you, what's the relation between you two now? Oh, right now we are very close. We like, okay. we are best of friends. Okay. <laughs> Let me take a break. When we come back, I'll go to Dorothy and Brenda. Um, you're watching The Standpoint. We are talking to three young ladies who are first daughters, sharing their own experiences, um, having to be mothers when they were actually children. They had to be daughters. But hey, let me say thank you to our supporters. That's um, Standing Florals and Decor. They give us these beautiful natural flowers and then that future flowers as well. You know, this, we are in a garden. So this is a, we are sister, sister. No, me and my mother, I'm too old. We are older than them, so. Oh, okay, big sister. You know, having a big sister, sister conversation. We are there. 
meaning say I'm 51 going 52. <laughs> You know, just try it together to love and to relax. And thank you to Puma Drinks and Awake Purified Mineral Water by Casa Precon Company Limited. Kodam's Gift and Stationery, everything gift and station. Just go there and they will sort you out nicely. Thank you to House of Food, Auntie Vera and the team, Mrs. Safari Poco and the family. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you to Yap Cleaning Services who keep our environment very clean. Juice time, they are 100% fruit juices. Go got to yogurt. Yogurt is very good for ladies, and you can see it. Eh? When you're going, I'll give you some to go, okay? Okay, good. thank you. <laughs> so if it has to be yogurt, it has to be go got yogurt. Thank you to all our supporters, and we are grateful to all of them. Cake Technique, thank you. We take a break when we come back. We'll find out the experiences of Dorothy and Brenda. We'll be back. Welcome back to The Standpoint. Well, uh, we're still talking about first daughters and the experiences. Some pleasant, some not too pleasant. Well, let me say thank you to GTP for my cloth. My dress is by Liran Collections. Thank you, thank you. I love it. This is a two-piece um, dress, skirt and top. I'm so grateful. Thank you to at the underscore global for my makeup. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful. Now, Dorothy. <laughs> Yeah, the first of how many children? Okay, so my mom and my dad they never got married because they had okay. me when they were young. I think my mom was 17 and my dad was 18, 19, so okay. they never got married. Okay. So for my mom's side, I'm the first born. She has um, four, four more with me. So I'm okay. the first born, two boys and a girl. Okay. My dad, me, two girls and one boy. Okay. So, so four in both, but I'm the main. Main, yeah. so both of them you are the first? Yes, please. That's okay. So mm -hmm. which which of them did you grow up with? Uh, more of my mom and her, and our family. Mom okay. and next in the family, yes. How did you, how, how was growing up for you? Um, I think I, when I when when I was a child, I was living more with my aunties because the, my grandma gave birth to a lot of like eight to 10. So my mom was the last one. So I got to live with most of my aunties I think I got to know my so because mom. Because she was young. Yeah, she was young. young. I think so. she, when she gave birth, she had to also co continue Continuous living school. her life. I think so. She had her older sisters take care of me. So I have Auntie Najeli. She's dead. May so rest in peace. She was the one I was living with more time. So I think it was around nine. You know, cousins, they do talk. So it was them that made me know, no. That's my not mom is way. not your mom. Because I yeah. didn't know. Then later, they were like, no, your mom, I think she was schooling somewhere or I think working somewhere. So later, around nine, that's when I really got to really meet her and nobody would tell her she's my mom because I really look just like her. Okay. So it started with me going to visit her. She was she was in Takaradias at that time. So I'll go there on vacations and then we'll come back and everything. You know, cousins growing up bullying you here and there, go to your mom going to so at that time I wanted to just live with her. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand why maybe for my grandma's side they were waiting they didn't want me to maybe go live with her because I think they thought I was more attached with my aunties. That's her older sisters exactly. and everything. But I mean, with time, I was like, you know what? Michael is with a mother. Nami is with a mother. I also want to go and live with my, my mom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. It makes sense. It's, yeah. yeah. So I, li I went, so I moved to Takradi when I was moving to the Jesus. So class six, moving to Jesus, I transferred from school to, that was when I started living with her. First, it wasn't, the disconnection was there because she was my mom, but I was just excited. I mean, but with time, it, be it became, a little bit um, hectic because I was I became more timid because she wouldn't listen to me or I don't know whether that was how it was supposed to be back then but yeah if you, if you she was very strict if you misbehave she'll cane you it, it started gradually I think me and her I was thinking it was okay too I think my brother came in my brother came in I was 13 years old when my brother came in so that was when it started more of taking care of her and my brother that's quick who so mostly when I was to school, you know, when you come back home, Jess says when you come back home, you have maybe classes you need to attend and everything. But my mother would tell you, no, no classes for you. You need to look after your brother. So it started like that. Then with time, it, it, it became frustrating because even for excursions and all that, you need to cancel it. And 
be with. I remember one time we were going for an excursion, was on the bus, and they told me, ah, your mother said you go again, you have to get down. And I'm like, why? Oh. Only for me to go there and be like, nah, you're staying home, you're taking care of my. So you were in the bus, and yeah. they told you your mom said you can't yeah, go she to get down. Yeah, she changed her mind again, so calm down. When I got I was like, ah, you, you cuckoo. I'm like, so I got to a time, if you feel frustrated or if you, if you let it out, it looks like you don't like your brother. Mm. But it's not that. But I was thinking I should have my life. Even, even back in Essex, mostly you want to go for parties. I want to say, prefect, sometimes when you come, you're, you're organizing parties and yeah, you want to go and you be like, take your brother along. And I'm like, yes, why should I take him along? I don't understand. So basically, I have to tag him along. So we'll go to the party and he'll be in his corner with his food and everything and you're dancing and you have to let me check on Kweku a bit and come back. And it was really, you know, my friends will laugh at you. And I was like, hey, are you sure he's not your child? And I'm like, no, yeah. <laughs> he's yeah. not my child. So I think um, I, have to, I, I mostly keep to myself because if you let it out, it will look like you're not trying to be helpful to your mom or it will look like you don't like your siblings. So in a way, I, I withdrew from my mom because I was everybody's child, but also a child to my other cousins. When my mom gave it to me earlier, I was, I was babysitting my, my, my auntie's kid, Mamiska. And yeah, with, yeah. Her, with me growing up with my mother, I feel the disconnection came in when, you know, you do so much because she's your mother, you need to stick by her. I remember running the shop at, at I think, 13, 14, you're running the whole shop. And, you know, she, she took it very seriously, the extent that, like, sometimes when you come in, the stock, she, she will beat you if she counts the thing, and <laughs> it doesn't add up. Definitely. And that's when maybe your friends are going on vacation and, and excursions, and even yeah. after school. They said, okay, right now we are leaving high school, you are going to SS, so let's all go for one last that's excursion and everything. I have, to, I have to run her shop for her. And I was thinking... So you were running the shop and then taking care of your every, brother as well? Yes, every time. And I'm thinking, when I grew up, maybe I understood because I did psychology. I felt like maybe she was going through something postpartum depression or something like Because when my, my brother came in fresh and he was circumcised and everything, as at that point, handling a baby is crazy. And I was supposed to handle that boy, and I had to wear him, wear clothes on him. And then, you know, when, when they Just are... the wound? Not really just him, but, like, take care of him with the pain. The pain. It's, okay. so, it's so frustrating because he's crying, and you can feel the pain, and you need to still take care of him and everything. And sometimes you don't have it figured out. He wants breast milk. You don't even know what he wants. And you are the one, and one will be like, let him keep quiet. And I'm like, what do I need to do to make him keep quiet? So... I mean, with time, the good thing is when you give me a baby, I know what to do to a baby now, yeah. whether the baby is crying mm. or not. I mean, yes, it made me bond with my brother more. So mostly it's me and him. And suddenly yeah. come and see me, talk to him like a baby and everything. And I think some of the things that, that's not some of the things that made my mom saw that she thought maybe I didn't like mine too, because sometimes it's so frustrating. I'm like, keep quiet. I'm, you, it's okay. You know, those kind yeah. of things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, keep quiet, because after that, I need to go and do this, I need to go and do that. So can you just keep quiet? Anything to get me away from him and something like that. So, yeah, it was, it was hard. It was hard. Did you get the opportunity to let your mom feel, understand how you felt? No, like I said, I was thinking that is the norm. So, so till today, she doesn't know how you feel. I, I think with time, with time, she, 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 she felt that in the point that broke me was when after SS, we came back home. That we were part of the four-year badge. We were supposed yeah. to go to school that particular year. Okay. So I came home and I was asking her about my forms because my aunties told me they had sent money. For, for the head to buy forms for me and everything. And she had not bought any of them. And I'm like, ah, we were supposed to go to school that very year, so what's up? She was like, she's not going to take me to school. I need to, after SS, after school, like secondary school is fast, come and stay home and look after my brothers with, support her, look after my brothers. And I'm like, no. I didn't know after that time what I wanted to do with myself, but I felt no. My re uh, religious teacher would say, you have to disobey to obey because I will never, ever disrespect my mother on any level. If mm. she tells me to stand, I stand. Like, that is how come the, ki the kind of respect I have for her. So it was very hard as an 18. You didn't have anybody, you know, you're talking to and everything. You, need to, you had to make that decision. So when I called my best friend up and I was like, you know what, I'm moving out. She was like, are you sure? Because she knows I am so much afraid of my mother. Oh, mother. And I'm like... Yes, for my school, for what I want to do. I don't want a situation where my brothers, I'm older than 13 old years, and they would have to feed me and my kids because their mother was too shallow or too weak to fight for what she believes in. 
I will move out. So I called him. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. You game, 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 game. It's okay. It's okay. You'll be fine. Mm. You'll be fine. Okay. Let me take a break. We'll be back. Welcome back to The Standpoint. Again, we say thank you to our sponsors, GTP, Timeless, and Easter on Balloons and Accessories. Everything Balloons and Accessories. Contact them. Dorothy, yes. you cool? Yes, we, are we are cool, cool. like that. <laughs> we are telling my chicks, you know. We are cool. Yeah, yeah. we are telling my chicks yeah. like that. We are cool okay. because, I mean, when I, whilst I'm talking, I realize that no matter what, I will never hate my mom. So I don't want it to be taken no, in the wrong because no, I yeah. really do love her. That's why that's, I said that's, when it that came... That's the complication. Sometimes yeah. you feel, you know, dealing with your own thing and you feel you're betraying. But the thing is, this is your story. Yeah. You know, I remember I did a program with Nanaya. Nanaya, the uh, musician. Yeah. yeah. Um, the uh, Pat Thomas, you yeah. know. Yeah. And she was telling her story, you know. And at a point she said, I don't want people, out of the blue, she just went that. I don't want people to think I hate my father. I don't hate my father, but this is my story. This is my story. I need to tell it as it is. Mm -hmm. This is what happened. Yeah. You know, so sometimes, you know, you think that, but no, this is yeah. not to embarrass anybody, yeah. but yeah. for your own healing. good and your own yeah. healing. Yeah. yeah. I'll come back to you, Dorothy, but Brenda, yes, you are number what? I'm number two. First number girl. two. My yeah. first girl. Yes, please. Yeah. How many come after you? Three. Three. Yes, please. And your story, any different? No. It's, <laughs> Dorothy mm. got me <laughs> just broken. Mm. It's just in line with it. But unfortunately for me, I had to bear a lot because my father died at an early age. Mm. I was in class five then. I actually do not remember the exact age I lost him, but I know I was in class five then. And then I last one was six months old. So like I was in class five, three after me, and the last one is six months. So it wasn't easy. And mom was just then a petty trader who sells petty petty stuff. So like she sat us down after the funeral when everybody left and told me and my older brother that this is the time I need you. I am not going to marry anyone. I need the two of you to support me to raise the, the rest. Actually, when, he, when she said that, I didn't really understand what was going on. Mm -hmm. So you go back from school, right after taking off your uniform, the ice water is already packed there for you to carry. And I had a classmate who used to live around Ashtown. So like when I'm going, she will say, let me escort you. Sometimes around June, July, like this, when the weather is cozy, it's raining here and there, you carry this water like three hours and nobody has even bought one. No even called you to ask, is it cold or what? And then you'll be feeling cold. So the little money you... Because you have to work on the rain. <laughs> the little money you get and you bring to the house, my mother will tell you that this thing you have bought, we have to make gari and soup with it. And I don't think this can buy gari for all five of you. So let me give it to Evans, Nanekia, and Nanansa. That's the three that comes after me. So you and Chief, try and take water and sleep. I think you people can bear it, but don't make anybody also know that we are starving. Hey! And how old were you? <laughs> I was in class five, going to class six. So and then I... you are starving, but you don't have to let people know that you are starving. So you just have to keep quiet and bear that. And it went on and went on till I completed JSS. And then things became so hard. I had to move out from my mother's house, go and live with a teacher who used to teach me as a house girl. So I was taking care of her kids and she would pay me at the end of the month. I never saw the money I was being paid with because at the end of the month, my mother is there to take the money. I wake up like 3.30, wash their staffs, keep the kids up and then send them to school. Make them, they, there was a car who was coming to, which was coming to pick them up and then they would go to school. I'll go to SS, like, by the time I'm going to school, I was cleaning our cast. From a doom to cast, I have to walk. 
because the money given to me wouldn't be enough for TNT and upkeep when I get to school. So sometimes I walk and get to school around 9, 30, 10 o'clock. And then there was one particular teacher who saw that I even get to the class tired and I'm sleeping. So I had to pour my heart out to him. And he told me that if really you want to graduate, leave that house, go to your mother, tell her that she gave birth to you. So you people should all endure the pain in the house. You can't be a mother at this stage. So my uncle was getting married and I sneaked out of the house to attend the wedding. When my auntie saw me in the tattered cloth I came to the wedding with, she said, no, you are not going back to that house. So they were waiting. I didn't go back, waiting for the man to come and look for me. And he never did. Together, that, that, those times the wife had left the place. So the man never came to look for me. And I was staying with my mother. My mother was like, eh, city how are I, how are we going to cope? So I had to begin another work again. There was a watch joint there. When the woman finished selling, I'll go and wash the plates so that the watch she has reserved, I'll bring it to the house for my siblings to enjoy. So it continued till I was able to complete secondary school. I never attended classes before. I never did. Last days about completing, my mother said, you have to stop. No money for registration. <laughs> and that was when, even after everything I had passed through, I felt she loved me mm -hmm. because she took our rent and moved out so that I could complete. And she paid. She paid my registration with that money and was sleeping on the street. So that gets you alone. I forgot about everything I passed through. I told myself that after SS, I was going to force that woman to take me to school. So I came to live in a car. I was working with one woman at Okaichi. And then I told her everything I've passed through. Yeah. Though she's, she's very strict when it comes to her monetary affairs and everything you are working under her, she will sometimes insult you and say a lot of abusive words to you. But I told myself that. Because she got to know your story, yeah. where you're coming from. She will say a lot of abusive words to you when you make a little mistake. But then the money she was giving me was also supporting home in Kumasi. So and I set a standard for myself that I'm going to work for five years and leave this job and go back to school. Just when I was about leaving the job, my brother got admission into training college. Then, so I realized that I had saved money. I could pay my nursing training um, admission fee if I'm gotten the admission. And then my mother called me, even in admission or training college, and there's nobody to help us. We've been hoping from here to here. So like, we don't even know what to do. And he is one person I like so much, so like, everything I have told for her to give to my mother, to go and pay my brother's admission. It wasn't easy. So I kept feeling bitter. And then my mother helped my kid sister to also come to Ola Training College. So I was thinking that being in Accra, sacrificing for the family, if not for anything, at least my mother should pass through and see where I live. She never did. She would just pass through and go and see my kid sister. So like I felt not loved. Mm. I felt mm. it. And then when we're going, we go to peak, thinking that, oh, I've left work. I'm now also entering school. So I needed help because all the money I had saved had gotten me to like final year in nursing training. And I needed help. My kid sister, who used to visit me every two weeks for provisions when I was living in Accra, she didn't even mind me. It was the brother that I sacrificed my admission for. He was there to help me together with one friend who is called Shila. She helped me throughout school. And I will forever be grateful to, to these two because I would have dropped out from the nursing too. And we made it. So like, after school, when I came back, I had not even started work, but my mother would sit me down and said, I can't answer. 
you people have to help me, was left with the small one, the last one. You people have to help me to see him through school. We had no choice. So then I would say it was the doing of the Lord because at least I knew that few months ahead of me, I'll be enrolled as a nurse and hook or cook, I'll get my salary. So like I held on to that. I was still staying with my mother. I had just begun life. I had not even received my salary and she told me that the room we are living in is small, so I should move out. I said, hey, where am I going? Yeah, you should move out. Yes, uh -huh. so that the kids, the younger ones will feel comfortable. And <laughs> it hasn't been easy. So like, I had no choice. I told my matron about it and then she got me something to rent a house so that when my salary comes, I can give it to the woman and I gave it to her. And one time I sat down and I felt so bitter that my mother hasn't been fair with me. But anytime I'm bitter, I just remember that one favor she did. And then I'll just put myself together. Wow. Hmm. Tonya. You're still hurting. Hmm. I am. Because as I told you, when I was talking to you, even on phone, mm -hmm. I could feel the pain in your voice. Yeah. Is this something that you don't grow over? You know how there's this feeling that, oh, your yeah, children, they'll grow. When they grow, they'll get over it. <laughs> so, about what you asked me if I am healed, I've made amends with my sister. But talking about it brings back the pain. Yeah. I don't hold any grudge mm. against her. I know I'm fine, but I don't know why talking about it brings back the pain. Yeah. Because you're broken. Yeah. Those, that, those <coughs> broken pieces were never mended. Yeah. Were not put together. So it's just all of you, and like most of us, all of us, we're addressing it yeah. at the top. But the broken and the wound is still there. Mm -hmm. To the little prick, it just comes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> mm -hmm. Are we healing? Oh, yeah. Small, small. Mm -hmm. You're getting there. But they think, oh, you're strong enough. You've handled it. I mean, when you're in I think that's the thing yeah. that makes me, like I said, yeah. Yeah. it's when made me uh, angry. Yeah. Like yeah. I, I said on the show, yeah. I am an angry kid. Yeah. Not yeah. angry with anybody, yeah. but angry as in why is mine like that? Yeah. Why should I be that one yeah. mm. to go through all this and still be strong and still have my goals intact? Yeah. Why me? I feel like childhood memories are mm -hmm. so powerful that no matter how old you are, you just cannot. No. Yeah. I mean, having a situation where you feel like you don't belong, it has nothing to do with friends. Like mm -hmm. I was, I always, I can be by myself for a very long time. And are you okay? I don't mind stepping out with friends because I felt I don't belong since I was a kid. It has nothing to do with anything. It has everything to do with what I was What's seeing. Seen? Because yeah. I wasn't talking to anybody about it. It's something that is with me. And yeah. you can't use just a day or two hours to let me understand. No. Having a whole family album in a house and your face is not part of it. Whoa. But your picture, that's what I'm saying. It's the little things that you're doing yeah. that we are picking up. Like a whole family album. But yeah, your picture is in there, but your picture is separate. I'm saying that maybe some children wouldn't take that to be yeah. whatever. Yeah. But the way but I yeah. am, I am, I was with my mom, like I was saying on the phone, like we can go and fight. As she's fighting the mother, I'm fighting the child. And I don't even know why we are fighting, but because my mother is fighting, I'm fighting, fighting. too. But it's hard. It's hard grabbing it. And I would never you know, put a duration to it as in, and you're supposed to be you okay see, by now. Don't, don't feel, I don't want you to, if I posted this question on social media, my inspirational page on Facebook. I have Agnes Baffo who says, why are we treated as strangers after longer years of sacrificing to raise our younger siblings, yes. playing the motherly, fatherly, doctorly roles? And then Adwoa Kwansuma says, mommy, being the first daughter and the firstborn isn't easy at all. Everyone, including parents, falls on you for every form of assistance, mm -hmm. be it financial, emotional, spiritual, psychological, yeah. and what have you. I'm really not finding things easy at all because I'm almost there for everybody, but no one is there yeah. for me. All they see is a strong woman. Yeah. Yeah. But deep down, I'm very weak. Yeah. 
Harriet Boatima says, I'm the second mother to my siblings, father and Evie, my mother. They all ask me for everything, sometimes in the presence of my parents. And then, um, what? Nakui said, hmm, my sister, I don't have respect. Oh, meanwhile, I do everything for them. My parents, my siblings, hmm, sometimes I cry as if I don't have family. And most painful one, my husband, who was bank manager, has also passed on. And now, hmm, I can't even continue. Then Ethel also says, as a first daughter, I have been a second mother to my siblings, a junior sister to my mother and my father's man wife. My siblings love and respect me. I am the family's chief matron and chief advisor. I mean, people have experiences. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not like what you're saying is, I mean, straight. you are the only one who feel like that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it is real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is real and people have stories to share. Yeah. Yeah. Brenda, mm -hmm. how do we move on from here? <laughs> you are just ripped up of your youthful ages. Me, the only time I can say I have been happy in my life is when I began working. Mm -hmm. Because I can't just sit somewhere and, and tell somebody that I had, when I was a kid, I was so happy. The only happy moment was when my father was alive. Mm. That was when I felt I was a daddy's girl. Up to date, sometimes I, I, one day I remember I asked my mother that, is it that I was a, a, your rival? I asked her. <laughs> She didn't mind. She's a quiet type. She won't mind you. She didn't mind me. She was just looking at my face. I said, ah, is it because daddy will take me everywhere he'll go? That's why he didn't like me as you like my sister. Because you pay more attention to her. And even my friends, mothers, and those close to me know the story I'm saying that it's obvious that my, sister like, my mother likes my sister. But one time when I sat her down and I spoke to her about it, she told me that, and I feel that as for you, everything, you can't contain it. I said, that is wrong. I will even die without you noticing that I'm dying. If you think that I can contain everything, I will, die, I will be dying in front of you, and you will never notice it. And it's true. When she wasn't well, I was living with her. I was also going through some personal problems, and she didn't even notice it. She was in the house when I left to go and have a surgery. They brought me back to the house. Three days, I was not home. She was calling my phone. I told my friends not to answer the call to get her worried small. So like, when I came and I couldn't walk, that was when she got upset. What is wrong with my girl? And I said, I'm dying. No, you don't have one daughter. You don't have an assistant mother. That's wrong. Treat me like I deserve to be loved. So like, parents out there, I don't think you all think that it's your daughter's responsibility to help you train up your kids or something. You have, that's the biggest mistake you'll be making because that's how come Ladies go out and then a young guy will just come in your way, mm -hmm. show you a little love and you and just cling to the call. person. Mm -hmm. Because you don't, you are not loved in the house. Mm -hmm. So when you go outside and somebody comes your way and tell you you are beautiful, you are this, you are that, mm -hmm. the probability of you falling into the person's trap is very high. Dorothy, yeah. we will heal, right? Yeah. Gradually, small, we have gradually. to work on ourselves and get yeah. it out. Yeah, and I believe that having this conversation, yeah. the fact that you can talk about it on a national television, yes. knowing that I it think. will go viral and yeah. everything, and is I the beginning you're ready to face the world. I yeah. was so nervous because <laughs> I don't want a situation where it would look like, you see, in, indirectly or without you thinking, you're so thinking about somebody else, how the person will exactly. think. Because that is how it exactly. is. It's like you've been programmed because that way. So as I'm talking, uh, I'm not thinking of what somebody will say about me. I'm thinking that, hey, and you came to see that, and your mother, and your... You see, that's, a, that's how I feel. I think yeah. that's how come the anger comes in. Because yeah. I, my grandmother and my, when my aunties come in, when they, when they come to Ghana and they, they talk about, my mom's like, no. Because in all this, you're all going to say, oh, she's your mother. Oh, dear, yes, she no, mm. no. Because if I don't take care of myself, yeah. I might do the same, same thing to, to my kids. Yeah. That is the balance okay. I am looking for. Oh, I'm sure. talking about this because I want people to know it's a shrew. Because I had a best friend that her mom liked her like crazy. Her mother was the one that came to pick me from my house when I told her I want to leave. I remember my mother calling this woman and insulting her, telling her that, tell my daughter to come back home because I wanted to leave. I wanted to come back to Tema. But as at that time, I didn't have enough money. So mine was, when did she come and help me pack out? Yeah. 
and let me go and stay with her mom and everything. The mom, her mom could not believe what was going on. She was like, are you sure that's her mother? Her mom was like, look at her, look at her. Like, I won't copy. That's her. I was like, wow, she didn't know. Because that's her only child. Wendy is her only child. And I stayed there with her. I remember my mom calling her and, you know, telling her things, like insulting this man she has never seen before, saying that, let my daughter leave your house and everything. And I stood, I saw the way she took all the insults in. And she still fed me. She still made me stay. She told me everything is going to be fine. Don't worry. You see, you so get she to felt see. Like you get somebody to see. Who's not my mother. Yeah. Okay. So you get to see that even my aunties and everything. And my auntie that calls me every time. Are you okay? How is work like? Like with what you are doing? How much are you earning? How much are you? How much is your rent is? If if you know you are earning and you are using half for your rent is not good. All these things. She will reach out because she, she realized that what I've been through. I wouldn't reach out to anybody. Because you have to be strong. I'm not in any yet thing. She can take care of herself. That's how come I always say that. That's how come I'm still single. It has nothing to do with me not finding some money to do it. Because I feel like now that I've gotten my independence and I get to think about me, not any other person else, I don't want to let it go. It's affecting you. You get it into a relationship, right? Yes, it affects you. Yes, I'm saying because I would, not, I would not want you to make a compromise or make me feel my happiness doesn't matter. That's why I said the aggressiveness coming. If you treat me any way that I'm supposed to treat you like a little, like a normal human being, I'm coming for you. I don't care where my boy. I'll find a way. Because I don't want to feel, anytime you also make somebody closer to me, feel less of a person. It just comes right away. It's like, hey, mommy, be calming down. It's not that deep. But, you know, it just hits me. Mm -hmm. And everything. Right now, my brother calls me once in a while and everything. Anytime I talk to him about whilst we're growing up, he doesn't really remember because he was a baby. But the bond is there. But anytime he tells me he wants to see me and everything, I'll be like, when the right time comes, and we'll come. Because I don't want a situation where so you, you haven't come seen to your brother me. in a long while? No. Give him Richard, we talk. And sometimes he sees me on TV. And if that, that, that thing, that fear of maybe he will come to me and he might have an accident. And they might say, hey, some catch us on pain in your nassim. Internal money plan. I'm not saying that is what will happen, but the fear yeah, of oh, something because oh, it's always oh, not me. It's yeah. always him. If something should happen to him whilst he was, he's with me, or any of my cousins, or my music, or anybody that wants to, sometimes I meet them out and I'm like, oh, let me come and sleep at your place. And I'm like, I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared because I don't want to switch where you something will happen to you and you don't blame me for it yeah. because they blame me for everything. <laughs> it's like I don't matter. And it's really, really painful living through it. And it's a childhood memory. So no matter what somebody will say, it is very, very hard. And you see, the thing that makes it hard all the time is you see her treat your brothers. So meaning that it's not like she couldn't have done more. Yeah. You see the way when Kweku is sick or when Ethan is sick or when my little sister is sick, you see the love she shows. Meaning to me, it's a choice you made with time. It's a choice to ignore because Abna wouldn't speak up. Abna will find a way to still move ahead. Mm -hmm. Now somebody will say, hey, now, you're not doing well. No, it's by his grace. Mm -hmm. It is by his grace. If I tell some of the things I faced through when I was in the university, of course, I had, when I tell them that I had a problem with alcohol, they am like, are you serious? Yes. You what? You were drinking? Oh, yeah. Back in school. I mean, that's fun. The crazy girl. That's the only but thing that, that... it was all a cover up. No, it wasn't like... That was me trying to, you know what, whatever it is, rebelling. Whatever is thinking that, like you but said, yeah, when you it rebel. Was cover, to cover up the pain within Yes. yes. To so, know, yeah, she's yeah. the hard girl. She said, or rebel to the extent that maybe when they see that you are falling off the grid, they'll know that no, there's something wrong somewhere. The only thing that's same I always tell people is the fact that at that time, social media was not really out there. Like, we're not doing everything that somebody does. You put it on. So back then, I think that was the only thing that saved me. Instagram, Snapchat wasn't really out there. Like, I would not be surprised somebody would have pulled out a video of me, you know, having a, a crazy moment or a breakdown somewhere. Because back in school, we used to have fun. But you overdo some things based on how you're feeling inside. You can't really share with your friends because either they laugh at you or they can't relate. I would, I would learn. But when it comes to the chilling aspect, I would overdo it. Mm. Either to run away from the pain or just not to feel anything at all. Mm. And having even how to be somebody love you. Somebody gives you the bare minimum and you're excited because you think 
that's, that's the way, the way to go. Bit, yeah. So I feel like if you're not it, it affects your self worth. Yeah. yeah. So it took a very, very long time for me to know that, you know what, I can do this on my own. I can work. And anytime, even though I was I was doing TV stuff and everything, I am always super nervous because I'm thinking of what somebody, because in my, like you said, you don't feel worthy. So you're on here and you're asking, hey, will someone even listen to me? Am I looking good enough? Always having a problem with the way I'm looking, the way I'm, I'm, I'm just happy I never bleached. Because mm -hmm. back then, at uh, uni, working in school, they also had this own thing where you want to wear and work, and they're telling you, I'm not a light-skinned girl, so yeah, don't yeah. pick you for the job. Yeah. You know, and you also need money. So it's either you go with the flow or you find a way to. So I always say it's God, mm -hmm. honestly. And the thing that I was working on back in school was when my stepdad came to visit me, he came to see me. I was so excited because that's that time. I wasn't really having contact with my mom. So it was like, I know through him, she would get to know that, oh, even if maybe she was a bad kid, she's doing well for herself. Thinking to please her, to let her know that, oh, I'm not that bad after all. I mean, I'm making something, something. good out of myself. My stuff that came to the school, came to my room and everything. And you can see that he wasn't buying it and everything. And I think he made a, um, a statement like, your mother think you even being in school, you are lying about it. And I'm like, wait, so you want us to be me the vice chancellor before we you believe it and everything and that's crushed it so it's like you're angry i can't hate it but i am angry is that how yeah. it is so i wasn't going home because there's nothing that you can tell me that will make me feel okay about my there's nothing my grandmother could say my mother has nothing to say because she's your mother so mine is you know more fine i have other mothers around mothers that didn't give birth to me but they see me for me I mean, meeting this amazing woman here, meeting yeah. you, even when you texted me and everything, I was telling, I was telling my friend, <laughs> I used to watch this woman, you know, now she texting me and say, you might not understand why I'm so excited. You silly emojis. No, you don't understand why I'm so excited coming on her show because she, she doesn't invite just anybody on her show. So yeah. even if nobody is seeing, I know that. I've become somebody better. You ask somebody, come here, you silly girl. Come here, give, give Auntie a big hug. Mm, you are more than her. Charlie, for, for, when, one of these will I'll come and sleep at your place. <laughs> Wait, in fact, we'll crash at her place. Yeah, exactly. um, we we'll crash to. at her place, you know. <laughs> you are more than worthy. You know what? Um, we'll be back next week with part two. We are going to continue this discussion with the ladies next week. So thanks for watching. I'm not going to give you a bit of me this week. Next week, I'll give you a bit of me. But next week, we are going to delve deep, really deep, into what is really, really bringing the tears. But let's continue this discussion wherever you find yourself. No judgment um, by parents daughters, brothers, siblings. There's a lot to learn. And next week, God willing, we'll continue. Thanks for watching. See you same time next week. Bye.